Hi there guys, hi the internet. In this video here, this is going to be a short one about the um, the old rock smasher I got here, I guess you could call it a rock smasher. I got my little man there, he's just chilling out. Um, so the rock smasher here has been going very well. He's been smashing rocks, making driveways, all the good stuff. So what I'll do is I'll just give you a quick rundown and a quick video and show you what's inside of it and the ins and outs. So in the last video, I don't know if you've seen, I think I did have the shoe on there, but anyway, there's the shoe. So much better with the shoe. Um, if you can see down there, you can see at the bottom and the very bottom two corners, there's the flare leading in. That wasn't there and that's made it so much better. So, um, so what we've got here is the internal, the internal bits. Now these components here are made of spring steel, so they're actually a piece of leaf spring. Um, I was using mild steel and I found that they wore out like really quick. Like, I don't know, I had crushed up maybe five wheelbarrow loads and they were very worn out. Also I found that they were wearing through on where the bolt goes through. So these spring ones, spring steel has lasted incredibly long. But you do need a tungsten carbide drill bit to get through that. So these are held in, obviously, they're flexible, they're like on a pivot there, so it doesn't jam up. These here are 5 8 bolts, um, grade, I think they're 12, or they could be 10, 10.8, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, they seem to be doing the job quite well. Now, if I was to do it again, and I'll show you. This, this main boss, this uh, forward boss closest to the inlet, I would move this back maybe maybe an inch or 25 mil probably to about maybe there. Just because what happens right is as you send the rocks down the, down the inlet, what they can do is they can get and they sit here and they just bounce off the blade. They just, they just sit there, just bouncing on the blade, and they, they can get ejected up sometimes, but they just sit there bouncing, and you sometimes have to get a hammer, and you can see, I get a hammer, and I tap that there, and they bounce in. But it's still just a pain in the ass. And I've had times where they've just jammed up completely and the belt slip, so that's what this little cutout's for. So you get it, and you just rock it backwards and forwards. So you've got the bearing, bearings here, these bearings here just came from um, what, oh, well here in South Australia, CBC, so just your local bearing outlet. I can't tell you the exactly ins and outs of them, but they're pretty, pretty straightforward. This is a 32 mil or an inch and a quarter in the old money. Um, just axle shaft steel. I'm not sure what grade it is, but it seems to do the job quite well. Um, and we got here the belt tensioning mechanism. This is very straightforward, very simple. So we just got some round round stock here. I mean square stock, and just another square square tube here. A piece of threaded rod here. So you wind this. It's got a nut here. So you wind that in. Pulls it tight. You get your tension. Got locking nuts just here. Focus. Focus. No, not gonna focus. We got locking nuts there. Another locking nut there. That's just when you when you adjust it, so you can pinch it and keeps it in place. Now the pulleys. So this here, this here shaft is technically 540 RPM outlet or output speed. Not sure exactly, but that's what they should say at rated RPM of the engine. Now this here is approximately double the diameter of that. So if you get 540 RPM you times it by two, you get what 1080. Um, if I was going to do that again, maybe maybe this could here maybe could be maybe 1.5 times the size of the far pulley there. Just because I think it would improve the torque capabilities and it really doesn't need to run that fast because the faster you run it the more dust it makes. I found if you run it quite slow 
it makes a lot better material but a lot a lot less dust so the actual body of it is a old brake drum what do you know from a truck um, just <laughs> reuse the main bolt holes that are already there made up this this plate here this this housing um, and I've got these locator lugs that locate around around the top and around or all around the whole diameter of it and that just helps locate it so when you when you um, hold it in place with your threaded rod it doesn't move about one improvement I did make on the old crusher here was that these outputs these outlets the sizes of these holes before were probably only well they were 5 8 so they were incredibly small now if you've ever drilled cast iron and you've drilled it by hand you'll know exactly how difficult it actually is so I ended up having to use a die grinder and I spent a very long time drilling out these holes to make them just just generally bigger um, now the aggregate that we're producing is a lot better, but it's still dusty. Like I said, the change of the pulleys would be definitely the go. But I'm not going to do that because I don't really want to spend any more money on it. If any of you guys have got a suggestion about what I should do with these here, with the way they... Way, way the rock sits there and just goes dunk 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 bouncing on the on that there if you've got a suggestion let me know it would be a good idea I thought about welding a metal tab here that's sort of just something to break it up a little bit on the way in so it doesn't sit there but then you introduce the new weld and that could break as well but I'm open to suggestions any idea is a good idea So this is the footpath that I've done with it. I've done so much more with it. I've done partly down our road and on the council road out there. I've fixed up many different potholes. I'll just show you some of the aggregate we're producing now. As you can see it's quite a good size. I'll show you some of the other stuff we had. So I just want to get a handful of the stuff that we originally were producing with the smaller holes. So this is it here. And as you can see, it's significantly smaller than this stuff. And that's so much more useful. Now a lot of you guys have commented about gold or gold ore and using something like this to crush up gold ore. I reckon that if you were to make these holes in the bottom quite small, maybe 10 mil, I reckon you would grind it up into a very fine dust. Obviously the smaller the hole the better. And the faster the belt spin, the more pulverized it becomes. In my case, I don't want pulverized rock. So... Um, this setup here, once again, maybe change the pulley sizes. I'm not going to flip it around the other way because then it would be too slow and that would defeat the purpose because it would jam all the time. There's not really a rock crusher as an impact mill, but you probably already figured that. Hello, Ashy. What you doing? What you doing, buddy? Yeah, tell me about it, mate. So, I know it looks rough, I know it looks a bit untidy, but it had a job, and I had one job, and that was to turn the incredibly large amount of rock that we have here in the riverlands of, well, Murray Bridge, into something usable, and that was its job, and I think it's done quite well. Just enjoying a lovely evening here. Just to cap off the video here in the old Murray lands. 82 acres.
shout out to the bloke who said on a new you need a new wheelbarrow, Mr. Sam Kiddo. There it is. Just chilling. Thanks for watching.